So you're about to listen to a one-off podcast between myself, Mr Panda and F.I. Dunwell, two prominent characters from within the Football Index community. They reached out to me um, the last couple of days. Obviously, Football Index has crashed. There's a little bit of history there. We'll put links in the description down below. But they reached out to me because there's a few things that they want to address before drawing a line under this whole Football Index chapter. So you may have heard the podcast that I appeared on with them you know, two, three months ago now. Uh, but they wanted to tackle, and I do too, um, some tricky topics uh, that you might expect all of us to have dodged, to be honest, given the last few months. Um, provide a platform for those guys to um, speak to the Football Index community and a broader audience, and also draw attention to what they're now doing in terms of trying to deal with the situation that's currently ongoing because Football Index has gone into administration. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Now before we get started, not everybody listening to my YouTube channel will be up with the world of Football Index. So if you guys want to take 20 seconds or so just to introduce yourself before we get into the finer details. Dunwell? Hi, yeah, I'm F.I. Dunwell and uh, I've been using Football Index for around a year. It's been an um, interesting journey that I've been on and Looking forward to having a conversation with you guys tonight around what's happened in the last seven to ten days. Um, yeah, hi, and I'm uh, I'm at Sporting underscore Panda, Sporting Panda. Um, real name's Adam, and yeah, been on Football Index now for about two and a half years, uh, living solely off of that income for the last couple. Um, and obviously, we wanted to do the show tonight and, and reach out to people um, with the news, obviously, of administration that occurred last week. Um, and just close any loops and have a, have a good open discussion about things, which I think will be helpful for people. Yeah, sure. Um, I get everybody who's following my channel obviously know who I am. Um, for I think I mentioned it in the intro, but I come on the podcast with you guys previously a, a few mm. months back, um, and I ruffled a few feathers. So um, we just, we'll just follow on from there, shall we? I think yeah. so. That sounds great. I mean, it'd be really good to just start off with checking in how, how you guys are, I suppose. Um, obviously, I think it's, what is it, sort of two and a half months now, maybe three, yeah, three months since we kind of came together for our conversation before Christmas. Um, and so much has happened since then. Panda, maybe starting with mm. you. I mean, how are you? So, you know, personally, are, are you holding up okay? Yeah, I... It's up and down. I won't lie. It's been extremely difficult. Um, and for those who maybe aren't familiar with the platform, Friday the 5th, uh, Football Index cut dividends by about 80%. And then last Thursday, which was the 11th of March, uh, Football Index or, or Bet Index, that subsidiary, uh, went into administration. Um, and it's been it's been awfully difficult uh, to deal with. I mean, I, I had half a million, well, north of half a million portfolio, which within 10 months has, has gone to zero. And the market itself has gone from 125 million well approximately to zero and it, it's a huge it's a national scandal as far as i'm concerned and we're going to get into that as we go um but look it's been extremely difficult for, we all deal with it in different ways and from monday the 8th um i started reaching out to khan again uh to geeks toy uh, to rolex collector and there's probably a point here to note for the football Index community they aren't the same account they're not the same person they're not the same people <laughs> um, i can assure you unless they're very good at accents and mimicking it but no, they are three distinct individuals and they've given me so much time in the last week incredibly smart people and we'll probably touch upon that later in reflecting how the community kind of interacted with them but for me i'm trying to pick pick through the pieces of, of what went wrong uh look in the mirror at myself and i, I just want to be accountable and follow this through and not wash my hands of it because i think there's a lot here we can all learn and you know from my perspective if if we can make a couple of people feel less foolish um let them know they're supported not waste money going down blind ends um in terms of law enforcement then i think that's a positive so that's really where i'm coming from i'm struggling but you know i'm here and want to kind of continue the journey and see it through to the end yeah, and just sort of staying with you for a moment, Panda. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking as as someone who kind of came into this, I guess, relatively recently in in the sort of total mm. FI life cycle. Mm. You were you were a really big part of the community, and I imagine your loss isn't just financial. No, I, the thing is, there's a financial element to this. I mean, I've been lucky enough to live off of gambling income now for um or six or seven years, so I have lost a. Uh, an amount of money which is very uncomfortable and i would say life-changing uh, apologies if you can hear my son <laughs> in the background for his bath but that's one element of it but the other the other element of this is the community so i i we were on a well i used to do a weekly podcast um 
with Fig every Thursday that Calm was on. And so I've been interacting with the community for, for a long time now. And I can tell people the fallout from this is truly devastating. So I've been opening DMs. I've been talking to as many people I can on the phone. And there are people out there that really do feel alone right now and um, and suicidal. And that, you know, it, it's a horrendous fallout. And there's been a big failure here in terms of a bookmaker that have continued to take bets where they didn't have any means to pay them out. Um, there's been lots of false promises along the way. Um, and th that's the thing for me, Don. Well, I can park the financial element to one side, but it, it's the community and the fallout and the human interactions I've had that have kind of really resonated with me and want me and, and have made me want to continue to, to be around and present. Yeah, I mean, I can really empathise with that. Been, mm. Yeah, for, from from my side, I mean, my sort of financial loss is nowhere mm. near the scale of, of your own. Um, and but in terms of the the mental impact on me as an individual, from like you having phone calls pretty much every day for the last week and a half with people who've mm. been affected by this, um, yeah. has been devastating. Actually, mm. it's been harrowing. Mm. Um, mm. It's difficult to really find the the adjectives to necessarily describe but like what what it's done to some people um and I mean, that's a big part of wanting to have this conversation tonight as a, as a bit of a wrap up in terms of three months on from our previous chat because i don't think either of us ever foresaw this coming um, no. but khan i mean to your credit you did to an extent i think and it'd be really interesting to hear like I mean, how are you feeling now i mean I, i'm i'm guessing you don't particularly feel good about being proved right given no. what's happened to so many people but it'd be good to hear you know how 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 are you kind of feeling about all of that yeah i, I mean i'm i'm somewhat detached from it because obviously i had no no money in there um i think just on the points you were saying there and it's kind of evident from some of the tweets that for a lot of people i don't think it's fully set in yet um mm. and i can hear the emotion in your voice there it is you know, this is this is actually real. I don't think it's really. I don't think the pennies dropped fully for everybody right now, and unfortunately, I don't think the story's fully over because I mean, well, it's, it's over for, for for me in the sense of my input. But um, going forward, obviously, there's a lot of stuff still to go through as yet. You, you, the company's gone into administration. Um, you've got a lot of people that are wanting to seek various action. We can come onto that later on. Um, but it's just it's not. <laughs> Being, being proved right to one degree or another um, doesn't give me any satisfaction at all. Um, now, I know there's a lot of friction <laughs> at one point <laughs> or another. Um, Should we reflect on that for a moment, Khan? I yeah, mean, let's be honest. We, we all kind of, I think all of us who have been sort of around the Football Index community or perhaps, you know, followers on your channel who weren't, weren't part of the community will have seen how some of that discourse transpired over the few months since the middle of December. Yeah. And it was deeply unpleasant, wasn't it? I mean, I'm sure you want to take the opportunity to address some of that, I guess. Yeah, I mean, half the reason we thought we'd do this as well was just to take the ball by the horn, so to speak. Um, I mean, obviously, I put, so I put out the first video, for anybody who's not aware, I put out the first video on 9th of December, just with a few, few risks raised. Uh, people had been asking me prior to that about Football Index, you know, in, in people asking, I was thinking, oh, because obviously the YouTube channel and whatnot, I was thinking, is there an opportunity here for me as well? Um, so I'd done that brief first video, um, which I expected that maybe a few people might be a little bit upset because, you know, you, you know, telling people there's risks and something they're using at the end of the day. But the, the comeback was um, significantly more than I suspected. Um, and there was a little bit of back and forth, and it can be hard online sometimes. I think a lot of things get quite misconstrued quite easily via text on Twitter, especially when you've only got 140 chars. Mm. Um, you don't necessarily know who you're talking to all the time, so you might think you're having a sensible conversation, and then halfway through you find that somebody was sort of yanking your chain or just being awkward. Um, but, you know, it went back and forth. At times I hold my hands up. I, you know, I, I said things that were a little bit abrasive, um, there's one in particular on on the 26th of January, which you know was a couple of months after the first video, more or less. Um, which I'm sorry if anybody was upset about that. Um, it was one of those days where I was having a, a, a bad day anyway. I was generally fed up, you know. It had been going on for a long time, and some of the things which I think maybe not everybody realises, um, there was such a level of you know I'd sort of log into Twitter in the morning and there'd be like 40 notifications. And half of them would be calling me an aunt and saying, oh, you know, I can't wait till we bump into you and all this kind of stuff. And I was just mm. thoroughly fed up with it. Um, so obviously there, there was that response that was quite sharp. I deleted it within two minutes. 
Um, but unfortunately, the person that it was in response to screenshotted that and then did, went on to sort of paste it everywhere and, and use it as some kind of sort of trophy, if you like. Um, so that sort of got blown out of context a little bit. Um, and again, you know, various, it, it's kind of, also there's, there's a, a separate thing psychologically. It's kind of interesting in a way how this whole thing's evolved because it shows how social media and stuff, and there, there is such this echo chamber that goes on online because you know where, where people sort of hear some things and this is not to, to upset anybody when they hear some things they want to hear it sort of gets retweeted 400 times and then when there's mm. things they don't want to hear it's kind of like you're chased out of town with a pitchfork and it's sort of buried very quickly mm. it's such um, such an interesting point maybe we should just pause on that and just like, mm. dive into it a little bit because in panda I'll, I'll bring you in here yeah i think that escalated incredibly quickly and i'm just thinking it's like the, the timeline Khan, thanks for laying it out because 9th of December, first video. I remember we had our like our show with Fig yep, on the 17th yep. of December, so only eight days later. And yep. actually, I now my reflection, having listened back to that relatively recently, um, within the last week, is that we had a really open and balanced conversation, actually. Like, I, I think we had a really kind of... Uh, yeah, you know, just to check in, guys, I'll, I'll, put, that on, link, on, I'll put the link for that original pod in the description when I upload this as well for anyone else that wants to. Yeah, I, I think yeah. that would be great, Khan, because we had... Um, you know, I think we try to uh, accommodate a differing view to stimulate some debate. I mean, Panda, you pick it up from there. What? Yeah, no, that's it's such a good point because when Khan uh, initially reached out to me, I was more than willing to have a discussion around the risks, the concept. I mean, I, you know, I, I've loved Football Index and it's been a massive part of my life and I believed in the product. I think that's important to say so. And I wanted to have that balance for our listeners throughout the, the Thursday shows. We were critical of Football Index Management where... I felt we needed to be called out. And when Khan came along, I thought, wow, what an opportunity to, to talk about a product I love with someone that's potentially critical from the outside. And I thought we left that podcast in a really good position where we were going to maybe review things in six months. Obviously, things have gone uh, down the pan since then. But the, it was the it was a six to eight week period after that where I think we all, I don't know, social media, that probably re it reared its ugly head in how divisive it can be. And you're right. I, I mean, I'm what I feel bad about looking back is, I remember looking through some of Khan's articles and, 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 and Geek's articles and looking for a couple of sentences that were incorrect about the platform. And I would almost use those sentences to, to throw out the rest of the content. Mm. You know, that was the power of, I would say, the addiction and the love and wanting to be proved right in this, I guess you'd call it an echo chamber. You know, if they made a full step or made a statement which was slightly out, I'd say they don't understand the product. They've never used it. How can they be commenting? And that's so powerful do, and dangerous think, about social media. Yeah, just to add into that, I do think that also yeah. actually FI have um, got got a part in this in a way because they've kind of like everything, it, it's created the perfect storm in a way. It's been carefully constructed uh, with lots of like psychological tricks and all that kind of stuff um, mm. to kind of almost encourage that. Um, now, I'm not, I'm not saying that they sort of set out to do that on social media as such, but, you know, calling people traders, dividends, yields, kind of like misleading people. Buzzwords. Yeah, misle yeah, misleading people into sort of a slightly different way of thinking sometimes. I can see how these things have happened, certainly. Mm. And I even, a job, even a job description today. Sorry, Dunwell. Just as, I'm just trying to bring it up. A job description today for Index Labs, I believe. It's for a software engineer. For those of you who don't know, Index Labs are the technology arm of Football Index. Um, Bet Index, I believe, is the trading company. And it says here, at Index Labs, we are redefining the boundaries between investment and gambling. Our product, Football Index, allows players to have a stock exchange experience that is safer and more predictable than financial markets. You see, and that's been peddled for years. Let's be honest, it has, hasn't it? This was a, a three-year, a multi-year bet, um, and it was the football stock market. Yeah. And as Carl said, the psychological tricks and uh, the level of deception through the years, you know, you, you can see why people got heavily invested in and this you, and, yeah, and naturally got defensive when critics come along from the platform. Because certain, we certainly. were hurting. We were There was a lot of money on the line. And it's difficult sometimes to accept criticism when you feel vulnerable, when you're hurting. Um, so I think things just, yeah, the, the heat kind of in the kitchen rose. Yeah, certainly. And to, to the point where I think you even see some people repeating those things. Um, and I, I do genuinely believe that they believe those things as well. So, I mean, I'm probably not the only one that said things that are regretted. Um, you know, various public figures, I, I won't <laughs> mention, so, saying it's sort of like a safer platform and stuff. Mm. Um, and I feel sorry for them because it's, it'll have had a, an impact on them in the sense of using the platform. And then also what they've said, because it could potentially sort of 
harm their job elsewhere, you know. Um, mm. But at the end of the day, I, I think, you know, although there were warning signs there when it went through the terms, those kind of things, all of that has been discussed, even to somebody. And in fact, journalists, several journalists have contacted me this week and they've, they've sort of been trying to get their head around it a little bit. So, so can you provide a bit of context? Mm. And even to somebody who's come from it from an outside perspective, um, you know, presumably quite intelligent, it's took them a long time to get their head around it. And they're still kind of mm. like, mm. not quite, you know, I can see how it's happened. And that's what I would say as well. There was this community and it obviously any 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 cross section of society you are going to find unsavory people in. But in the main, there were just some really great people I've met and friends along the way. And we had a love of football and researching footballers, looking looking for different angles for our trading strategies, going out for dinners. And, you know, I was surrounded with a lot of intelligent people. And it's not just, you know, the casual gambler that's been sucked into this, sadly, uh, which is why the fallout is so devastating. This goes far beyond, you know, popping into on a Sunday into your local bookmaker and throwing, you know, throwing on like a £10 acre. You know, this was wrapped up uh, very shrewdly um, by management. Yeah, and also... I think if I could just... Sorry, go on, Sam. Um, I was just going. I was just going to say, if I could just sort of add a couple of reflections of my own. There, I think there's um, a couple of things. So, one, this was a business and a brand that was built by social media. I mean, uh, if you just kind of trace it back, the use of social media to promote and create a community who really owned and then sold the product on behalf of the business, mm. really, I think created some of that environment that we've just, we've just been discussing. Um, mm, secondly, mm. there's a really well-known effect, isn't there, whereby inside your family, it's perfectly acceptable to call people out and be critical of your family. And yet when someone outside, if they're to make the same point, mm. you, turn on, you turn on them. Yeah. And I think I observed a lot of that with Football Index over the last couple of months. Like, you know, we were critical. There's no doubt about that. We were critical as members of the, of the community, both on podcasts, on Twitter, wherever. But... As soon as someone from outside of our community is trying to point out some of those things, there was, was an organised attack. It was vitriolic. It was vitriolic. Yes. There's no yeah. doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and you know, they were shameful as well, mm. really. Mm. Um, mm. So, and just to kind of just one more quick, quick kind of point, Panda, based on what you just said. Mm. And I was saying this to um, you know, someone I, I know and respect deeply over the weekend. Some of the smartest people I've ever met have been through this community. Yeah. Um, and we're talking about chief executives of large businesses. We're talking about people working in the heart of government, uh, you know, people who have really achieved huge amounts of their lives professionally, you know, lawyers, accountants, um, you know, genuine, almost blue chip careers. And that also creates this sense of reassurance, I guess, for want of a better word. Like, well, if all of these people are feeling like you know mm, they feel great comfortable point. and mm. safe to have their money in this thing well surely that makes me the idiot for thinking otherwise and that actually again i don't know if echo chamber is the right word i mean that's, that's, that's your sort of term calm but it feels like it all contributed to that yeah. kind of feeling really I, I i don't know i'd love to hear what what you guys think about that yeah i think Can't? i think really that has just created the perfect storm and i think that's probably you know that's partly why there's it, it felt like there's so much frustration when sort of thrashing out the, the various points over the last well i say you know the, the the couple of months that followed that previous uh very first video you know um and I, so i think both of you have spoke to the geek now right paul um who wrote some of the articles and we, we, I'd obviously spoke to him after that. He sort of got sucked into it a few weeks after the the, the podcast. And you know, typically he's a kind of like a, a spectrum kind of guy um, who's written some software, so he understood all of this fully quite quickly. Mm, mm. Um, he's sort of banging his head against the keyboard, you know, in a way. It felt like that. But I also appreciate that sometimes it could be a bit abrasive in the way. I called him. I called him Marmite last. I called him yes. Marmite on the phone last night, and he seemed to take that okay. I think because um, it's taken me a week to kind of get through to him. I think, I think that's fair. And to be honest, I don't think it's the first time he's had that impression. <laughs> no, because I've I've been challenging him all week on. I, I guess I just want to loop back very quickly in terms of surrounding ourselves with intelligent people. The other part out there for people that don't know about football index as much. Where did you? They might be saying, "Well, how did you fall in? What reliance did you place?" And I and I did place reliance on the gambling commission. Um, 
rightly or wrongly, uh, the auditors uh, to look at the business model. Could they be a going concern? Because I'm from a former Big Four audit background myself. Um, there were links to Oakvale Capital, uh, a boutique M&A firm in terms of uh, raising finance for them. There was obviously management representation issues over the years, statements around an FCA license, bringing in credible board members, um, alternative asset class was floated. There was a partnership with NASDAQ, which you can find the information out there on nasdaq.com and read about that. So Football Index were going to pay for some tech um, enhancements and bring that into the trading platform. Obviously, there was sponsorship of uh, Nottingham Forest. From the, there was more and more pieces of credibility that I was starting to place reliance on. Um, and somewhere, it slipped through the net. The framework has ultimately allowed something that has been compared to a Ponzi scheme to, to fall in the cracks and and that's quite alarming um and I, we and should be po- slightly careful here Pat, shouldn't we because we know there yes. is an ongoing um license suspension ongoing administration ongoing yes, yes, potential yes. you know parliamentary kind of um uh inquiry and true and, and, uh, and let so we, we need to give that time to run we do, course, we do. Guess, but we there's do. nothing that you've outlined there which isn't factual and can't be going checked independently yes and oh, that 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 headline around the framework was taken from an article i read over the weekend from a, a news a news outlet who re- wrote that headline so yeah but we need to be careful with what we say and w- on that point i just want to just have the opportunity to just be respectful to the staff that work there they wouldn't have known that these are the wrong people i think to be attacking i mean i've you can go onto the football index website there's board members mark blanford from sporting bet invested 1.92 million in football index uh, Brian Mattingly from Triple Eight Sports come over. Andrew Burns, former CFO. Um, Lord Mandelson links with Oakvale Capital. He co-founded that, who has now moved to Triple Eight Sport. Um, and there's Adam and Mike, who were CEO, former CEO and current CEO. And I think these are the questions and the people that need to be challenged as opposed to the junior staff members, because I do think they've been getting a tough time on social media. That's just my personal take on that. Yeah, and I think... There is a line here, isn't there? And I think so. It's entirely understandable that given where people are right now, that they may express their hurt and upset and their Mm. frustration Mm. at what's happened, um, particularly given the sums of money um, that we're talking about being involved. But it wouldn't in any way justify any kind of personal attack or threatening the safety of someone. and we would kind of, I think, universally, all three of us would say, people like, please don't do that because actually it's incredibly counterintuitive and counterproductive as you want to create an environment where this investigation can find out mm. what happened and what went wrong. Mm. Mm. I mean, well, if so. we just, if we just, I think, move on a little, if that's okay, it would be really good just to hear from both of you some reflections, I guess, of, you know, what did go wrong um and you know any sort of hopes or regrets that you might have like based on what's now happened i mean khan I, I might bring you in here i mean you did a lot of work on trying to understand the model and understand the viability of the football index model what do you think you know what would your reflection be having you know been through that journey yourself leaving aside some of the kind of difficult community like elements of all of it just in terms of a pure kind of betting product like space do you think this could have worked with a different management or a different like product ex- execution i i don't really think so no i mean so <laughs> there's a few points on that but just before uh, a little while before we decided to record this actually the didn't the cto um a tweet was brought up that the cto previously made um that was that is that chris christoph popov yes it says well i'm just going off of his linkedin information but it says he left, sure. he left there in 2019 but he mm. said, um, and I quote, is I can confirm they had no idea what they were doing, but they knew their model was flawed. They didn't want to address the issues, and that's why I, why I left. And it's mm. like, so to say that long before, you know, the COVID, the problems, the the changes to the dividends and all that kind of stuff, he's basically saying, or as it reads, uh, that it was unsustainable then, which was what... Um, the, the, the kind of angle that I, I come up with after looking at it for, for a short while and so many things have changed and I think that that's also part of the problem or the issue here in terms of critics because it branches off in so many different directions you can really mm. get lost and then you have mm. to bring yourself back online write it down you know to, to work out exactly what's gone on here but um, aside from the the dividends 
that I, I don't I don't think it'd ever work. I think that, that for it to I mean it's appealing in terms of a concept as we said previously on the last podcast, but um in order for it to work financially, I think it would be very unappealing to players. So, you know, you'd either have to go with the angle of they, they provide the the spread and it's huge or, you know, or there's massive commissions, you know, and, and lots of things going on like that. So looking at the um, the numbers that are available from various affiliate accounts and stuff like that, they said they had a dividend reserve of 67.5% um, to cover the shares dividends over the space of three years. Now, first point that we made was that you know after three years that should expire and the platform was operating for five years before this happened so where did the money come from for the last two years now you could argue commission but the commission doesn't tally up with the amount of payouts or it doesn't appear to okay so if you just assume that the that they haven't dipped into the dividend pot is what i'm trying to say here um when they shouldn't have and then they've got the 32.5 percent remaining now, suspect that the the running operating costs, if you take a look at some of the things they've got and what they've been doing, would be into the millions per month. So already it's sort of like, you know, even on a, a broad level, it doesn't start to look good from the start. So you've got, you know, you've got gaming duty to come out of that, um, which was at 15% on the affiliate screenshot of the scene. The affiliates would take 30% revenue of the, the 32.5. Uh, you've got Obviously, they've got around about 100 employees. Is that right? I can't. I can't remember the exact number. I think got up to 150 at one time. Okay, um, and then you've potentially. Seen, yeah, sure. And you've you've seen that they're advertising sort of like these developers 100k a year. Um, presumably, that's not the higher level people. It would have been getting paid a lot more. Um, they've got huge marketing outlay. Uh, QPR knots so on both their shirts. TV ads, digital spend. Facebook ads, you know, you've been, you're involved in business yourself, uh, Dunwell. It's not cheap business, is it? No, and we've and we've heard some of the numbers bandied around. You know, we heard chat of a thirty million pound marketing war chest at one point, not that long ago, even. Um, so, you know, these were huge sums, huge sums. Yeah. So to to, to look at that on the even on a broad level, without you know, because we can't see under the bonnet, and obviously, what's going to happen is going to happen. But it doesn't make sense right from the start. I don't see how that was ever sustainable. And that was even if the bet was expired at the end of the three years. And we discussed this when we came together last time, didn't we? That actually it wasn't difficult to engineer a situation whereby you could make your bet last for multiples of three years. And for a potential young player, you might be um, accruing shares in, that could be a 15-year bet potentially. And, and we, we knew that was standard practice for traders. I mean, Panda, coming to you on that, I think people will know by now, those of you who listen to your previous podcasts or read your social media, that you took a really big position in one particular player mm. with the view of having a long term hold in it. I mean, reflecting on that, like, yeah. you know, as a bet, it'd be great to hear your kind of your thoughts on on, just, on that as, as a whole. Well, just, yeah, I mean, just gutted, gutted really, because it, t- it took a position out. I identified a footballer that I thought was going to be a future star. I had a lot of um, kind of credibility behind him in terms of future transfers as well. And, you know, you take on all the risk uh, of ACLs and um, Achilles injuries, as I've mentioned many times. And, you know, for, for the company then just to rip up the bet slip in front of you, um, it, it's hard to swallow. Um, and then obviously worse than that to go into administration. So, look, I, I don't have any regrets in terms of, the, the player I chose or picking the bet, but you know, it, it's very difficult to, to sit here now after it's all gone wrong, but I, I don't really know what else I can add to that, to be honest with no. you. I'm, I reflect what, what I'd like to just chip in here is that I've spent all week now thinking about whether this business model could have worked. I mean, I said, where, where did I find comfort and what reliance did I place? I've been through that column. Um, I'm working through now, you know, what do I need to own, um, help the community move forward. But the business model is something that I'm still spending time picking over. Could it have ever worked? And I think that balance between having a sustainable business from the bookie or the house's perspective um, versus the trader engagement and the enjoyment, that's a very hard balance to strike. And in normal bookmakers, I guess you call them normal traditional ones, um, you can win quite big on Ackers and you can throw a few chips in the middle and play that game. Football index, you do need big pockets and you need to be selling uh, bad bets with a lot of money. Um, And that's difficult to continually do. I fell into the trap of thinking, you know, you could do it because I saw an environment where lots of bad bets were being placed. 
but the market obviously was still going up and most people were winning at that stage. The plateau point was always going to be very difficult. Um, and we, that could probably be a show in itself. I mean, what I've learned over the last week in terms of the business model, we could probably do a whole spin-off of an hour because I am coming to the conclusion that this actually just couldn't work, which is if I could quite sad to realise. Go on. No, it, it, it is. It absolutely is. And I think as a parallel realisation, I think I knew this before, um, but has been confirmed to me over the last seven days, is people desperately wanted this to work. Oh, and yeah. how much did that colour, and I, I say I would say there, but I must say our, because it coloured my own impression of the platform as well, the idea of being able to speculate over a very, very long-term period, and we're talking potentially up to 15 to 20 years, um, is hugely attractive it, to people. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was a dream. I mean, obviously, I... Make or make a living through Betfair, but classically in the UK, you can't. If you're a successful better, you can't bet at bookmakers, and you can't speculate on players' careers. So the idea that you could do this in Football Index, it caught everyone's attention. We all were professional football scouts to an extent. We we're all scouring the globe for talent, and that was what the addiction to the game um, and the community. I would have to say as well, which has had impacts on family life. I mean, for those of you out there that are listening. I spoke to my wife about it last week or after the fallout. And there were so many times looking back, I said, oh, one minute, one minute. Or I was just checking things, looking at a score from another league. And that's the time you can't, you know, claw back. And to have nothing to show at the end of it, it is very difficult. And it was a job for a lot of people. And I just, you know, want to, I guess, put that out there so people don't feel like they're going through those emotions alone. Because you're right, we were blinded to an extent to criticism because we so wanted it to work. And that's so powerful. And I've never been through that before myself. Yeah, it's I think I think just from looking, learning experience, looking at Twitter and the like, it's very clear that a lot of people really, really want it to work. Um, mm. From an outsider's perspective, I find it a little bit sad that some of them think maybe it still could, because I've, mm. I'm, you know, I'm kind of I've made my mind up that it can't. Um, mm. And now to see the CTO say that as well, um, you know, it's a real shame, really. But one thing that really needs to be highlighted, I think, and you'll you'll come on to your action stuff shortly, I believe. But the uh, mm. one thing that really needs to be hammered home, I think, is the gambling commission have really messed up here because mm. if you know if outsiders can sort of pick those holes as we have look at some of those numbers we've just spoke about there and say that something's not right here and clearly it's reliant on some kind of new money and also somebody from the company said that in one of their customer service responses i believe um if if we can notice that how the hell did the gambling commission not notice it and Khan, you reached out to the Gambling Commission yeah, yeah. before Christmas. Is that right? I, yeah. I think I read something to that extent. Yeah, there, there's... um, Yeah, in fact, we'll put a link in the description as well also if anyone wants to see it, if anyone wants to use it. By all means, go and use it. But I sent them an email on the 11th of December. Um, I put that, that video out on the 9th. Obviously, I was a bit concerned by then. I've seen the response and... Quite frankly, you know, I was struggling to get sleep <laughs> for, for a good few mm. nights thinking, oh my God, this is a ticking time bomb. Um, so I sent them an email. Um, and I did use the P word in the email, but I said those kind of characteristics. Um, and you know, three. And by that, three... you mean you mean Ponzi, yeah, for those yeah, who perhaps yeah, you know, are, aren't keeping up necessarily. But you know, you, you you did you you alluded to this being a Ponzi, you know, essentially akin to a Ponzi scheme. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was just just my personal view. I've sent into them. Obviously, like you say, everything's ongoing still. Um, we'll put a link down below. But you know, to, to, for them to receive that email, acknowledge receipt on the eleventh. And then also send, um, they sent me an email on 6th of January just to confirm uh, the details and that it had been logged properly. It's like, for that to be sent on the 11th of December and then on the 11th of March announce that they're going into administration, I just think that's a massive shortfall for months. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And also I'm led to believe that people raised concerns um, far before then too. I haven't seen them, but... I mean, I might mean, just stay with you on this, Khan, really, because I mean, clearly you make a living from the sports betting world, it's fair to say. Yeah. Like, you, know, you, you provide a number of services and products and advice to people who are either sort of starting out or getting their feet under the table when it comes to trading and the like. I mean, what's your view on the wider implications of this collapse? Um, for the industry which you're very closely associated to. We know there's well, uh, a big yeah, I mean, review ongoing of, of UK gambling law. I mean, yeah. how are you feeling about that from your own personal like, perspective? Well, I know also, because obviously I, mean, I mentioned that in the email too, There's uh, obviously there's affordability checks bearing down on everything um, and lots of things need to be changed and corrected within the industry. But 
there's there's a massive if there's a massive failure from the gambling commission, it doesn't really matter what gets changed because they're not implementing what they need to implement. They're not doing what they should be doing, are they? But that, that I mean that'll have an impact on on people like me depositing money into Betfair to trade Cheltenham, for example. You know, um, so obviously you can see why I had a vested interest in reporting it, not because I had an agenda against FI or anything like that, but. It's it's hard enough as it is, and the way things are going, you know, you, you use a if you use a sports book, if they'll take your bets for any longer than a week, um, they want all your details, all your information, and it's just going to get worse. And mm. and this is going to going to make it worse for the gambling review too. I think that's probably right. Um, I mean, Panda, I might just sort of bring just come back to you on something, which I I, I was really keen to hear from you in this conversation as part of this discussion. What are your hopes now from this going forward i mean not just in terms of um you know what happens with the industry or what happens in in the future with with football index but i mean in terms of your hopes for people you've got to know the community for yourself like in terms of the the human angle of this which is so significant yeah i can't answer that 10 days after um what i know you know when i've been speaking to people there was a lot of people feeling uh, shame and feeling alone um, and feeling obviously financially crippled um, and all three of those are a very uh, toxic combination and people go into high street solicitors and trying to seek legal advice and that's why last week I reached out to a few people in the community so I spoke to you I spoke to ASP I spoke to Mr Market amongst others and I guess the key message at this stage for me is that we need to be united as a community and have a single message um, I'm not particularly happy with some of the, the journalistic pieces I've read. I think there's an element of rubbernecking from certain journalists, and we need to be very careful about the message that's portrayed. This isn't gamblers losing money. You know, I, I know how easy that is from the outside to look at and, and throw it away at that. There, there is a bigger failing here, and I guess we've set up FI Action Group, which I guess now is the time maybe to point people towards. Um, we're going to set up subgroups underneath FI Action Group with figureheads who will feed information up the chain. We are logging uh, dozens of pieces, well, hundreds of pieces of evidence a day uh, and storing that away. And it's so important to be united and to be organized in this approach because this needs to be you know, a class action. We need to let administration uh, play, play its part and finish. Um, but we need coordination. And I don't want anyone to waste another penny or another thought on their own and feel isolated um, because, you know, as a community, we, we can take this on and we, and we can move forward with it. Um, and that's really, I guess that's what I want to, to, to be a part of moving forward and try and make a difference. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, when we spoke last week, it was something I was trying very, to get something. Keen. Mm. Oh yeah. I was very, very keen to, to be involved with you on that because uh, when you listen to, the long-term and profound effect this change will have on people's lives it's hard not to want to do something positive about that and it's not just financial you know money well it might be kind of easy to say money kind of sometimes we spend parts of our lives well off and sometimes we spend mm. parts of our lives not so well off but mm. actually our ability to form relationships our ability to judge risk our ability to take a level-headed view of difficult situations can be affected by going through something and i'm going to use the word which actually is akin to a trauma i think for a number of people and it, mm. it i hope i'm not overstating it but i think for some people to have really seen their whole lives turned upside down and i'm not trying to say that there's no element of personal responsibility in this because of course there is so like, mm. you know, we mm. all take when we speculate we know we take risk but um it's just it's really hard to not look at this and think that there are people who you know won't ever quite be the same again as a result of what's happened in the last couple of weeks I fully agree i think that's really well said no i think that's more um, more than fair and and you know to for the, i think you know a further failing of the gambling commission if you like is for, to allow them to make such significant changes at such short notice it's just um well in my opinion it's criminal and let's um let's let's try and you know, point people in the right direction here, guys, to being able to be involved in in what Pandas just kind of set out. I mean, we'll put the, I guess, Khan, we can put the information underneath this on the on the site. But um, Panda, what's the what's the Twitter handle for anyone who wants to yeah, follow it, and and, it, and see it, this? 
Yeah, please follow. It's at FI underscore action. Um, there's a group of 11 uh, traders there that are, are running that page. Um, we are dedicated to it, spending a lot of man hours sifting through information. Uh, every time you tag us into something or send us a piece, uh, we're storing it away and filing it. Uh, we have experts in law there, and we've got a real cross-section from the community. This is not about... Did we have a big pool, small pool? Were we from this region, that region? This is around everybody and seeking justice and fairness for us all as a community that have been through this experience. Um, and that's a real key message. And just be wary of just just show some patience if possible. Um, and when media approach you, ideally put them through to FI action and the group action, because it's really important, I think, that we we have a consistent message that goes out there and we manage the communication from our side. We don't want to splinter uh, and fall into kind of mistakes maybe that Football Index made. So, um, you know, that that's the kind of advice. Um, and there will be lots of subgroups popping up. Join those, be active in those, and then the figureheads will report it up. Thanks, Panda. And I, I guess we should also um, say for anyone who's really personally struggling um not just with the the longer term wanting to like see this put right but perhaps in the very very immediate term of struggling with dealing with their own feelings or their own pressures as a result of this um uh, we should point people towards gamcare who um mm. are an excellent um service for just having someone to talk to um and just having someone you can pick up the phone to and and dis and discuss you know people who have uh you know really suffering um as an implication of uh gambling um because this was a gambling product so this definitely falls under that jurisdiction um and i suppose we should also point people towards the samaritans as well because um i know there are people there are people feeling incredibly low out there and we've mm. i think we've all referenced that um over the course of this conversation and, and khan again it would be great if we could just pop some of that information underneath this for people to access i mean i feel like we're po possibly drawing towards a, a mm. natural close to our conversation Khan, is there anything from you that you kind of you wanted to add to what we've discussed already or perhaps we think we might have missed over the course of our um, conversation this evening? Uh, I mean, I guess the only the only mention I could uh, put in there is the uh, the one star book reviews that, that appeared on Amazon. If anyone feels like they want to remove them that might have left them uh, as a bit of a knee jerk reaction to the initial video, then feel free to do so. Um, and just just by way of getting this to reach more people on youtube make sure you tap the uh, the thumbs up button down below obviously i wish you know this this follow up had been been under better circumstances quite frankly um and fair play to youtube for doing this considering everything that's happened and it's still probably so raw so i find that quite admi uh, admirable um <laughs> and I wish you every success with your action group thank you um, thank and, you Tom. And, and panda i think perhaps yeah Last word, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go to you. Um, is there anything you want to kind of bring up in addition? Um, not, not, not really. My DMs are open. Um, I'm still working through some from the weekend. I'll continue to reach out and talk to people, um, take it day by day. I want to reiterate and tell the community that um, Khan, um, Geeks, Toy and Rolex Collector uh, have been fantastic in the last week. And this isn't I told you so. There's been none of that. They've been trying to help me th pick through the pieces. They saw a problem with the platform that I didn't. Um, obviously, that's very difficult for me to to stand up and kind of take note of. But, you know, they are supporting us and um, they're on our side. And I think that's important. So put down the, the needle in the arms and uh, let's come together would be my message. And I would really echo that as well. Thank you. So I think we've probably come to the end of our discussion this evening. Um, Khan, from my side, can I just say thanks for hosting us on your channel um, and inviting both Panda and I to be a part of a conversation with you. I think uh, it's a been a really positive, a difficult, absolutely mm. very, very difficult conversation. Um, but I'm really hopeful that in some small way it contributes to a more positive position than we're in today. And that's all we can hope for, I think, from here.